hello students i hope you are all fine and in good health so let me continue with my discussion related with the drama mother's day now as you know that george enters and george is looking very very upset because uh, he got to know that he is known as pompey on pearson and that is something that really made him very much unhappy now let's see what happened george just looked in for a minute i suppose mrs fitzgerald mrs fitzgerald who doesn't know what she is saying well yes i suppose so george george aghast george you are calling me by my name mrs fitzgerald oh i am sorry mrs pearson impatiently what does it matter your name's george isn't it so people will call you by this name only who do you think you are duke of edinburgh do you think you are the duke of edinburgh that whenever your name will be uttered people will actually bow down to you george what's he got to do with it just tell me that and isn't it bad enough without her calling me george no t pompey on p pearson and poor doris has been crying her eyes out upstairs yes crying her eyes out no t pompey on p pearson and most importantly my dear daughter doris she is crying so much upstairs mrs fitzgerald oh dear i ought to have known oh i i i don't know this i ought to have known it i ought to have known george staring at her annoyed you ought to have known why ought you to have known nothing to do with you uh, it's nothing to do with you it's actually a family matter so why you are getting so much upset and why you are getting so much anxious nothing to do with you mrs fitzgerald look we are at sixes and sevens here just now so perhaps you will excuse us we are at sixes and sevens means the condition in the house is very topsy turvy topsy turvy and uh, we had a quarrel there was a bit of a heated argument also so i hope you can understand uh, mrs pearson before mrs fitzgerald can reply i won't excuse you george pearson next time a friend and neighbor comes to see me just say something when you see her like good evening or how do you do or something and don't just march in and sit down without a word it's bad manners now mrs pearson we know actually it is mrs fitzgerald she told george that whenever a guest will enter our house it is your duty that you politely will wish her good evening or how do you do it is totally indecent and improper to sit without uh, wishing a neighbor so from the next time it should not be repeated it is bad manners mrs fitzgerald nervously no no it's all right mrs pearson no it isn't all right we will have some decent manners in this house or i will know the reason why no it is not all right we should uh, learn some polite manners in the house we should learn some decent manners in the house so let me continue uh the next line so i continue from where i left or i will know the reason why well george intimated it well what mrs pearson why don't you get off to your club special night tonight uh isn't it they will be waiting for you wanting to have a good laugh go on then don't disappoint them now why you are waiting here you have a special snooker 
match tonight all the club members including the waiters and the bartenders they are waiting for you to have a good time so don't disappoint them why don't you go and visit them george that's right make me look silly in front of her now now you are insulting me in front of a neighbor go on don't mind me sixes and sevens poor dory's been crying her eyes out now george has repeated a few part of the same dialogue that already he repeated earlier he is repeating it again just like this one uh, sixes and seven then poor dory's been crying her eyes out this part are already been repeated earlier getting the neighbors in to see the fun all right let her hear it what's the matter with you have you gone barmy or what mrs pearson now it is mrs fitzgerald and as we know she is very very aggressive in her character so now see how she react if you shout at me again like that george pearson i will slap your big fat silly face please underline it dear students now you can understand that mrs pearson she is unlike the real mrs pearson now it seems that uh, she is saying that if you shout at me in this way george pearson i will slap your big fat silly face and she was about to slap george pearson also mrs fitzgerald oh no 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 please mrs fitzgerald don't do that george staring at her bewildered because now george is thinking that what's wrong because my own wife is behaving in a very furious manner with me but the neighboring lady she is sympathetic she is anxiously looking also at me either i am off my chump or you two are how do you mean now george is saying that either something wrong happened with me or maybe something wrong happened with both of you no no please mrs fitzgerald look you are mrs fitzgerald so why are you telling yourself to stop when you are not doing anything tell her to stop then there would be some sense in it that why you are telling her to stop because you are an outsider so you are not involved in it why you are showing so much of anxiety why you are getting so anxious i think you must be tiddly i think that something is wrong somewhere mrs pearson staring up savagely say that again george pearson she is still very angry and uh, she is very much eager to hit george pearson george all right all right all right now george understood that the situation is not good so george is very much afraid and told all right all right all right i won't say anything more now dodis enters left slowly looking miserable she is still wearing the wrap mrs pearson sits on the sofa mrs pearson hello dodis dear dodis miserably means because obviously she was been very much criticized so she is not well actually from that perspective she told miserably hello mrs fitzgerald mrs fitzgerald i thought you were going out with charles pense tonight what about that you were about to go out with charles pense doris what's that to do with you ma'am why you are asking me this it is my personal thing so i repeat what's that to do with you mrs pearson stop that mrs fitzgerald no it's all right mrs pearson severely it isn't all right i won't have a daughter of mine talking to anybody like that no i don't want a daughter of mine who will be talking in this way with a guest no i want my daughter to be very very polite 
uh, while she is talking with someone. So I repeat, I won't have a daughter of mine talking to anybody like that. Now answer Mrs. Fitzgerald properly. Properly and decently you answer Mrs. Fitzgerald's queries. Doris or go upstairs again or else you go upstairs once again. George, don't look at me. I give it up. I just give it up. Don't look at me in that way. I give it up. I just give it up. Mrs. Pearson. Well, answer her. Doris. I was going out with Charles Spence tonight. But now I have called it off. Now I was supposed to go on a date with Charles Spence tonight. But now I had postponed it. I had called it off. Mrs. Fitzgerald. Oh, what a pity, dear. Why have you? Why have you done this? Why have you called it off? Do this with a flash of temper. Because if you must know, my mother's been going on at me making me feel miserable and saying he has got buck teeth and is half witted. No, because my boyfriend has been insulted by my mother who told that my boyfriend is buck teeth. And half-witted, not at all intelligent, rather a dumb man. So that is the reason I am very much hurt by that. Mrs. Fitzgerald, rather bolder to Mrs. Pearson. Oh, you shouldn't have said that. Now why have you told this? You shouldn't have said it to her. Mrs. Pearson, Mrs. Fitzgerald. I will manage my family, you manage yours. Dear students, kindly underline this part also. Here, Mrs. Uh, Pearson, she told, actually it is Mrs. Fitzgerald as we all know, that nothing to worry. I will manage my family, you manage yours. George, taking her off now, are you any? Mrs. Pearson, even more grimly. They are waiting for you at the club, George. Don't forget. And don't you start crying again, Doris. George, why you are waiting? It is better you should be at the club because the members at the club, they are waiting for you. Don't forget. And Doris, please don't start crying again. Mrs. Fitzgerald getting up with sudden decision. That's enough, quite enough. Now it is something that neither George nor Doris they ha have expected because all of a sudden the neighboring lady Mrs. Fitzgerald, she stood up and she told it's enough, quite enough. George and Doris stare at her bewildered. Stare means to look fixedly. They stared at her because they never expected her to behave all of a sudden in this way. So dear students, uh, I stop here. George and Dory stare at her bewildered. Uh, please go through this particular audio lecture. Listen to the audio lecture. It's a lengthy drama as I already told you earlier. So uh, please go through it and if there is any... Uh, a uh, short of doubt do let me know about it thank you students thank you all